If you are afraid to add backgrounds to your watercolors, or you complete your subject and get stuck trying to decide what to paint in the background, don't worry because in this video I'm going to show you 5 beginner friendly background techniques that you can use to level up your watercolor paintings. So let's get started. The first demonstration is super easy and effective. I'm just creating a splashy, abstract background around this little kingfisher bird. I started by wetting each section behind the bird and branch, then used a bright green gold to add it wet and wet. I just wet each section at a time, then dropped in my watery paint into the wet paper. Once everything was painted, I rinsed my brush and used it damp to continue softening the edges and making them lighter in value. This technique is the most easy background to make and sets the subject forward. An abstract nebulous background is a nice choice when you don't want to leave a blank background, but you also don't want too much detail to compete with the subject. By the way, each of these paintings in this video are excerpts of full-length tutorials I have on my channel. So if you would like to see each of these from start to finish, you can click on the link in the upper right corner of your screen to queue each one up to watch next, or you can click the video links in the video description. This next background I will show you is for this little tree frog. I wanted to create a background that was nice and dark so the bright elements would really pop out in the foreground. In this painting, I started with painting all around the subject and all the way to my taped off edges. I mixed a very dark green and a lighter mossy green using warm primary colors. I made sure to mix enough watery paint to cover the entire background, and I chose these colors and used them interchangeably to create a soft blurry effect between the two colors. Sometimes after painting the subject, the background doesn't hold up and will need another transparent glaze. In the case of this tree frog, I mixed a dark watery blue and glazed it around the frog after re-wetting the paper. This made the value darker, but you could still see the original colors beneath the glaze. Theoretically, if you are using good paper and very watery transparent glazes, you can repeat this process multiple times to achieve the amount of depth and contrast you want in your background to really make your subject stand out. For background number three, I painted a bokeh effect, which I believe is a photography term for a blurry background. Sometimes you see bokeh as diffused, soft orbs in the background, but in this case I created a soft, out of focus forest scene. In creating it, it's similar to the way I painted the abstract greens behind the tree frog, but for this blue jay I needed it to look like distant leaves and sky. I again started with the background first, and I wet the entire area. I already had my colors pre-mixed, including a dark green, a lighter green, a yellow, and a sky blue. If this were a larger painting, I would have pre-wet just one section at a time, but since this was smaller and I have had practice, I wet the entire background before adding the watery paint. 
I started by adding random splotches of yellow, which will blend with the different green shades. As long as the paper stays wet, it will all blend softly without hard edges, which is exactly what you want when painting a soft blurry background. Next I added splotches of greens, careful not to cover up too much white area, and last was the darker greens and the blue for the bits of sky peeking through. For the small areas between the Jay's feet and right next to his feathers, I added more green to contrast with the edge of his body and make him stand out. Once the background was dry, I painted the bird and the tree, and the background in this case did not need another glaze. For background number four, I painted this baby elephant with another abstract background. But since it softly meets the foreground grasses towards the bottom, it became more representational as a stormy sky. For this painting, both the subject and the background were painted relative to one another, rather than first one then the other. I started the elephant with warm browns and cool grays, and incorporated the background and foreground right away by splattering paint while the first layer of the elephant was still wet, using the same colors and letting everything blend together. After the elephant was mostly complete, I added a cool magenta color to the background, but leaving some splotches and white spots visible. I added some blue wet on wet, the same shade as the shadows on the elephant, and some burnt sienna and gold ochre in the foreground. To really increase the drama and the contrast, I added some indigo right behind his ears while the paper was still wet, and added some more detail wet on dry to the grasses in front of his legs.
for the fifth background, I created this soft bluish green two-tone effect behind the brilliant pink blooms of these magnolias. I painted this entire piece using only three colors, permanent rose, phthalo blue, and hansa yellow. Since pink is the complement of green, by using just these colors I was able to achieve a harmonious effect. To paint the background around a complex subject like these magnolias, I had to work fairly quickly to not get hard edges. I painted wet on wet and only one section at a time so the paper wouldn't dry too quickly. To make sure I had a nice hard edge along the petals and stems, I didn't add the water right to the edges but rather left a small gap. Then I could get the paint right to that edge with my brush and where it met the water it would disperse out onto the paper where I could add more pigment by loading my brush again. I alternated the green and turquoise, but not too drastically because I wanted the magnolia blossoms to be the main focus of this piece. If you are interested, I have this magnolia tutorial available as a full length course where I show you step by step how to mix all of the colors, paint them in glazes for depth and luminosity, create textures on the petals and branches, and pretty much every technique you need to create a realistic floral painting. I will have a link in the video description if you'd like to check out the course and enroll. So these are five of the easiest ways to paint an abstract or almost abstract background in your watercolor paintings. If you want to give one a try, I would love to see how it turns out. Please tag me on Instagram and let me know how it goes. Also, if you have more watercolor ideas or struggles that you want me to talk about in a future video, please leave a comment. I read every one that I get and your suggestions are always super helpful. Finally, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you and subscribe to my channel for more weekly tutorial videos. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.